the Austin welcome, and thank you for having me here tonight. And thank you for coming. My name is Mike Grossman, and I'm an ambassador for Best Buddies, which is a not-for-profit organization cultivated by Anthony Schreiber of Georgetown University back in 1989. His mom, Eunice Schreiber, helped bring to fruition the Special Olympics, which began in Chicago in 1968. In the end, Anthony, as a volunteer for Special Olympics, noticed a bond between the Special Olympics athletes and the volunteers. So he came up with an excellent idea of creating one-to-one -one friendships between people with and without cognitive disabilities. Friendships where each can learn from the other. Best Buddies is an organization that has come on strong the last few years. Agreed? <laughs> more, more on the college level. Agreed? <laughs> <laughs> However, there is still much, much more to be done. My speech tonight consists of four parts. The type of resistance we face as a people, and myself personally have faced. My personal experience with Best Buddies. The positive of having a one-to-one -one friendship with someone with a cognitive disability. And recognizing all the people who have a place for me in my heart and soul. As I said earlier, Best Buddies, established in 1989, has come out in recent years, but before 1989, there were back then and right now many challenges we face as a classification. To sum up the challenge we face as a people, and I personally have faced, I want to go back to a scene from Keely Weston from the late 50s, early 60s, which I happened to see on the internet. I said to myself, hey, this would be a great idea when I give a Best Buddy speech. <laughs> that was three years ago. Now, now, on to the scene. This guy comes into a restaurant wearing a tuxedo, which is part of a fancy dancy outfit. He also speaks with a foreign, spoke with a foreign accent. The other guys were wearing the cowboy hats and the western clothes, actually made fun of his clothes and his accent. All except the two main characters of the TV series, Father and Son, who were also in the restaurant as well. After the guy being made fun of left, the son asked the father, why do they paint that way? And the father said, it's hard to explain. Sometimes when people look strange or different, or often viewed with cruelty. And the son asked, why? And the father said, ignorance mostly. Sometimes when people don't understand something or somebody, they feel they're to be feared or hated. That's wrong. It takes a long time for people to realize differently. We are a people, and I myself, understand things differently, process information differently, learn differently, think things through differently, and most important of all, most important of all, I express myself differently. More than that, I've been met with the same type of resistance that I described just moments ago. In addition, I've gotten made fun of in mean and cruel ways. For example, people have tried to set me up to look real bad by using fake names, which happened to me back in my junior high school days and at the college level. In my high school days, people would say, hey, that person really wanted to be friends with you. No one could as well, that was not the case. There are other harsh ways I've been met with resistance, but regardless of how I was met with resistance, in addition to treating <coughs> as if I should be feared or hated, it left me feeling isolated and ostracized. There are people out there who genuinely want to have a conversation with us, ultimately befriend us, and go places with us. But due to their lack of exposure to people with disabilities, don't know how. Our goal tonight is to make it easier for you to influence those people to want to do so. To begin this process, I invite all of you in the audience to participate by simply raising your hand to the two following questions. How many of you observed or experienced firsthand the pressure for people to mold themselves or mold yourself to satisfy others so that they or you would be like? Raise your hand. Maybe just a little bit more than that. <laughs> two, the pressure to knock yourselves out or themselves out or yourself out to impress others.
When you join Best Buddies and befriend a person with special needs, you have a friend whose attitude is a simple one. All I want is your friendship. There's no pressure to mold yourself to satisfy that person so that person will like you, or knock yourself off to impress that person. All you have to do is be the best friend you can possibly be. In return, that person will give you constant reassurance and communicate to you on a constant basis. Your friendship is truly all that counts. Let me use my personal experience with Best Buddies as an example. I met a person named Bailey at a Best Buddies function in June of 2013. We saw each other at another function in November of the same year. We became friends, and once a month we would meet at Starbucks. We talked once a week over the phone, even though she had now moved to another state. I would always greet her very enthusiastically. In return, she always gives me unconditional friendship, without giving thought to how I think or express myself. Early in 2013, I had I have and still have a one-to-one -one friendship with Will. We have gone out for lunch and dinner, we have gone to movies, and we always talk about sports and about other things without giving a thought to how the other person thinks or talks. And we continue to make contact as best we can, though he has traveled all over the country and has also gone to graduate school. I met Rich through Best Buddies in December of 2014. We go out to eat lunch and dinner, and he has included me in the circle of friends. We have gone on to play miniature golf, and in addition to have normal conversations, we've even talked about the presidential race and Illinois politics. <laughs> Without giving a thought to how the other person talks or expresses themselves, the experiences which I've just described leads us into five benefits to befriending me or someone with a cognitive disability like me. We love to make you feel special any way or any how we can. You do not have to mold yourself to satisfy us or knock yourself up to impress us. We get very excited over any act of kindness towards us. All we want from you is to be the best friend you can possibly be. And the most important reason of all, you will be leaders of future generations by being among the first to befriend someone like us. I would like to recognize the following families, all of whom have a special place in my heart. I will start with um, my immediate family, my mom, my sister Lynn, my brother Danny, and his kids, uh, Jacob and Max and uh, Duke. My cousins, Rob and Rhonda, and their children, Sarah and Jack. My cousin Matt and his two children, teachers Noah and Anna. I also, my sister, Gail, and my uh, dad, who unfortunately are not here with me today, but who are still with me in my heart. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge uh, Jen and her kids, Sean and Brady, uh, Kim and her kids, Sophie and Reese, and my Aunt Cher, who's in the front row. Um, <laughs> my, uh, and also, my uncle, Bert, and my aunt, Serene, and my uncle, and more importantly, are not with me today, but are still with me in my heart. I'd also like to acknowledge the best buddy family of Katie, Josh, Morgan, Shannon, Sari, and Lauren. My DePaul family of Peter, Karen, Jean, Shannon, and the girls who are with her, and the girls on, all the girls on her team who have treated me as family. And my younger group of friends, Will, Rich, Brad, Andy, Maria, Bailey, Kelly, Kevin, Connor, Kristen, Dan, Megan, Shannon, Bailey, Dave, Alex, April. You all contributed to the person I am today. And finally, with 25 exclamation points, <laughs> I would like to thank Jessica and Jay from the Loyola chapter of Best Buddy for having me here today. Thank you.